Hello, we're gonna be talking about waves in this video and really how we develop what we might have done at GCSE as we go into the A-level physics course. Now, a lot of this actually kind of starts out exactly the same. So what we first of all start with is maybe a progressive wave. Now, the word progressive might not have been used at GCSE, but this just basically means that we've got energy being transferred from one place to another. So perhaps we have a light wave or maybe infrared, something like that. Now, there are a couple of graphs that we often use to actually, um, I suppose, come up with some of the sort of terminology that we use all the time. Now, I'm just gonna do these uh, one above each other. Um, the graphs that we tend to look at are sinusoidal in shape. So it looks like a sine or a cos wave or something like that. Um, and this is something which it's really important to, I guess, get to grips with in terms of actually drawing these shapes. So this is a skill that you will develop is drawing a kind of sine curve like that. Okay, you can obviously do better as you progress. Now this first one over here, what we have is a displacement, which I'm gonna call X for displacement. And this is how far maybe the particles in that wave move from their rest position. And it can be both positive and negative. And along the bottom, we're gonna maybe look at the distance along the wave, which, um, yeah, I'm just gonna call this S to be maybe the distance or the displacement along the wave. And what we can maybe label on this diagram here is from maybe one peak to another peak. This is the wavelength. And we use the letter lambda, the Greek letter lambda, to represent the wavelength. And the amplitude of that wave is maybe how far the particles move apart from the rest position. And that means the amplitude is this distance here, A. Okay, so we've got a displacement, so it could be positive or negative and have any value up to the amplitude, which is the maximum value. So that's just some, some of the basics there. Now the other graph that we could draw, um, I'm just gonna use a different color for this uh, to show it's actually a different graph. So maybe here we have um, the same wave, but what we could look at is the displacement and how that varies with time. So this is maybe one particular particle and how that displacement goes from positive to negative over a period of time. And here, if we were to look at one wave cycle, and again, you can go from peak to peak, uh, you can go trough to trough, or this point to any subsequent point one wave cycle later, this distance here, I'm gonna call capital T, and that capital T stands for the time period of the wave. And actually, this is the kind of thing that you might see on an oscilloscope. If you actually look at the trace of that, we've got the time base going across the waves. And this means we can work out the frequency, and that's just equal to one divided by the time period. And of course, we measure the frequency in hertz and the time period in seconds. So this is a really useful equation for waves. The other one that you might have seen is that V is equal to F lambda. So here, that wave speed, and sometimes we use the letter C to represent the wave speed. So sometimes we use C, sometimes we use V. Again, it depends on the context in the actual course you're doing at A level. Um, so both of these say that the frequency times the wavelength is equal to the speed of that wave. Now, that's all good if we have a progressive wave. And the two main categories that we have include waves like this and waves like this. So this one over here is a transverse wave and the particles are oscillating at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. So this is a kind of thing where we've got things like light uh, and so on. This one here is a longitudinal wave and this is maybe something like sound where the particles are oscillating or vibrating in the same direction as the energy transfer. Now, um, something which is actually quite interesting that we develop at A level is if you have a transverse wave Effectively, uh, maybe think about the particles. Some of them are going up and down, maybe towards you. Some of them are going side to side. And we have this thing called polarization. Now, I've got a couple of Polaroid filters here. And basically, if I have these aligned, it still lets light through. So you can still th see with this, you can see me. But if I was to rotate one of these through 90 degrees, eventually it stops all the light coming through. And if I keep rotating it, so if it's a bit out of focus, Again, the light then comes through. And this is something that you only have with these um, transverse waves, because what we can do is we can filter out vibrations in different planes. And effectively, um, this analogy is used, it's called the picket fence analogy. Imagine if you had a rope um, that was going up and down and it went through the picket fence. If you had two picket fences 
um, which were lined up, you can still see that there's a gap for that uh, um, wave on the rope to go up and down through these. But if you were to rotate one of these by 90 degrees, that would stop the rope oscillating up and down. And that's a bit like what happens inside these Polaroid filters. In actual fact, polarised light um, is used in calculator displays. And if I was to type in a number here that you can see on here, we can see that as I rotate this, we can maybe see the number, and then it goes dark and bright again. So that's something called polarisation. Again, it's something that's going to be introduced in A-level. Something else, though, that we have are waves that don't actually transfer energy, but they actually store energy. And these are called standing or stationary waves. Now, you will have seen one of these at GCSE. If you did the practical where you had a vibrating string, there was an oscillator at one end, and it set up a wave down that string, and then you could actually measure the speed of the wave within that solid string material. Now, a lot of people did that at GCSE, but didn't really understand the physics. Effectively, if you have a wave, a progressive wave that moves along, it bounces back, and then it interferes with another wave coming in the opposite direction, what we set up is a standing wave. Now, you might have something where maybe you've got a piece of string, and what you see is the wave is going up and down, maybe between two fixed ends, and then a short amount of time later, that wave is in a different position. And we have positions where that wave doesn't appear to move, and these points are called nodes. And then you also have a point in that wave where we get the maximum displacement, and this point is called an antinode. And basically, um, we set up various fundamental or harmonic frequencies. So this is something we're going to develop. And basically, the distance from a node to another node is equal to half the wavelength. And that's because if we think about it, a wave really goes up, down, and back again. And if we have a node, a node, and a node, these points where it's not moving, the distance from here to here is actually equal to half the wavelength. Now, you might remember that from GCSE, but you might not have understood it. We can also set up these standing waves in tubes. Um, and here you might have, um, you know, the example where you blow over the top of a, a milk bottle. Well, in the olden days, people had milk bottles and you could blow over the top and you hear that note. Um, it's also a bit like why you hear sometimes this really kind of weird throbbing sound if you're in a car and you maybe put down the rear windows of that car. You can hear this kind of sort of sound if you're sat in the front. And that's because we set up a standing wave inside that. Now, something else that we can look at is the way that waves interact. We might think about reflection, which isn't really discussed too much at A-level. We also have refraction. Now, this thing over here is made out of clear, colourless plastic, but you can still see it. And that's because we have some partial reflection of light, and we also have the refraction of light. And that's because as the wave um, goes through a different medium, it speeds up or slows down, and that changes the direction. So this is something that you might have seen before. You might have maybe a glass block here. You have a ray of light, and then you can look at how that refracts into the block. Okay. Now, it might be before you might have just said, well, we've got things like the, the normal line here. We've got the angle of incidence and refraction. But we take it a stage further at A level, and we actually do some calculations. We can actually calculate the refractive index, which we use uh, the letter N for. And this tells us how much that wave, or the light in this case, would slow down. So there's a few more calculations. And it might only be if you did the Edexcel IGCSE that you actually had to do calculations at GCSE level. But again, I've got videos that explain that at GCSE and also going into A level. Something else which is really important that's not really covered much is something called diffraction. Now, effectively, if we have a little gap, and so this is a gap over here, and maybe now we're going to be looking at the wave fronts that approach it. When the wave goes through the gap, it spreads out. And this is what we call diffraction. Now, that's fair enough. You might see it uh, in pictures of harbours with uh, waves which kind of spread out when they go through a gap. It's how sound wave can travel around maybe the gap in a door, so you can hear people outside even if you can't see them. But what gets really interesting is if we had maybe two gaps which were next to each other, I'm going to continue these wave fronts down here, and then we had the light coming around here, what we then get over here is the waves coming from this gap interfering with the waves from there. 
And what we can now look at is something called interference. And sometimes we look at the interference between um, the two gaps here, and there's equations where we can actually look at the interference pattern produced, because effectively over here, sometimes the light may be, um, the light adds together and we get a bright spot, and sometimes we get the waves actually cancel each other out and light cancels other light, and we get like a gap on the screen. We can also, I guess, continue it even more and think about, well, what would happen if we had many, many gaps? Okay, and again, if we kind of continue this wave down here, then we get lots and lots of interference. And what we then get is something called a diffraction grating rather than just a double slit. And then we have the interference of light going through a diffraction grating. And again, there are equations that we can use. Uh, and this is actually how we can measure light, the wavelength of light in the school lab. If you have a red laser, we can actually take some measurements, you know, with a meter ruler and a, a normal kind of 30 centimeter ruler to actually calculate the wavelength of that light. So this thing over here is where we kind of do spend a lot of time looking at the interference between different waves, especially when we have diffraction gratings and double slits. So that is just a bit of an introduction about the things that will be coming up as you do A-level physics and you look at waves.